Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today with another video for Inquisitor Martyr, that's right. Um, I'm pretty happy with the turnout of the last one, and I've decided to go ahead and do another one. As you can see, I've got a little bit different armor than I had before, and I have a great axe, but I also have a sweet sexy auto gun, that's right. So I've pretty much been trying to go down the levels to get some better equipment. I really want to get to the heavy bolter, but it's going to take some time to do that. Um, unfortunately, a heavy bolter doesn't just come early on in the game, so you basically got to get some level up to eventually unlock it. Again, the system is very similar to how Vermintide's set up, so new weapons show up the more you play and so on and so forth. As you can see here, I actually have a, a Cabal as well where I've been trying to complete some missions and get some experience towards your Cabal rank, which apparently leads to a tech tree and all sorts of cool stuff. And as you see, we're the terrible stompers. Get it, Terra? You know, like the world Terra? Yeah, fun stuff. Anywho, I'm gonna click claim rewards real quick and try to get some goodies out of this. Let's see, garbage. Uh, oh, not garbage, actually pretty good. And garbage, fun stuff, fun stuff. Um, yeah, we'll take the tarantula turret. Tarantula turrets are always pretty dope. Um, so we are going to go over to our inventory. And as you can see, I forgot where my inventory is. I could have just pressed I like a regular person, but why would I do that? That's too easy. It makes way too much sense. All right, and we're going to swap to our secondary gun. Is this a better gun? No. No, it is not. So the gun we have equipped is better. And that sword's pretty good. That flamer's pretty good. Everything else is pretty much garbage. But this armor, though... I personally don't like this armor as much as the uh, the demolition armor because the demolition armor makes you look a little bit more like a space marine, uh, which I actually like this one the best of the two. So far, I don't really have any good armors to choose from, but hey, whatever. We'll go with this one though, because like I said, it uh, it's pretty much the best one we have, giving us a seven to all resist and having a power level of 27, thus increasing our basic capabilities. As is now we still have digital weapons I haven't gotten anything to replace that yet unfortunately but I did just get this which is really good yeah let's go ahead and equip that all right cool that bumps our rating up none not at all doesn't bump it up at all so we're garbage cool fun stuff all right anywho let's go do a mission I was thinking we might run a single-player mission first see how that goes and then maybe join some of my friends for a mission as well uh, seeing as they're doing some stuff now one of the things we are going to do as well is we're going to do an assignment like a, a campaign assignment and this we actually get to choose uh, a couple of different options to go through so let's see we'll click on priority assignment uh oh no this one's just going straight to the level i must have messed up the actual assignment that i had before where it gives you basically options you can go through and so on uh making missions easier and harder i suppose I didn't really see how in-depth it is yet, but again, no big deal. We're going to load into here and uh, do us some cool stuff. I really can't wait to see what more weapons are actually in the game. If I look right here in this little cutscene, it looks like that's actually a, not a cutscene, a loading scene. It looks like he has a shield and a power axe. That's pretty dope. I can't wait to actually try that out. Should be some fun stuff. Yeah, this little skull is to spawn in on you. Demons. Heretics. Enact the Emperor's will and purge the universe of their taint. Yeah, Let that's hatred right, be our man. shield and their blood. Let hatred be our shield and our blood our salvation. That's hardcore. We're just gonna go in with our axe though and just start cutting people to shreds. That's right. Wait, wait, wait. Glory for the Emperor. Um, so yeah, the combat's simple. Again, I think I explained it a little bit in the last video, but to explain it again in this video, uh, you pretty much all your skills are attached to one of these. Uh, basically, the left mouse button, right mouse button, uh, number one, number two, three is kind of a passive ability that generally buffs your character or um, you know throws a grenade or whatever, depending on what you have equipped in your armor. And then you have an armor ability itself, which will allow you to either call in a turret, call in an, like kind of a mini artillery strike. Um, or in any manner of things. It really depends on your character, your class, and what you're capable of. We're actually going to use my auto gun here because it's faster to take these big bastards down. And uh, there's a lot of people here. Oh, well, I'm dying. That is not going well for me. I'm going to need everybody to just calm down and please fall down and die. Thanks. You know, for the Emperor and all that good stuff. Uh, 
I thought this was gonna go a little bit better, but it's not. It's not. It's going bad. It's going real bad for me. Garbage. Ah, <laughs> Let me fall back. I don't want to die. Jeez. I was actually thinking that with my power level being as high as it was, I would just walk through. But I guess even uh, high level, I'm still gonna take some damage from these di these guys. I should probably use cover, but there's not a whole lot of cover on the map to use. Um, and those tarantula sentry guns really wear you down if you. Uh, don't pay too much attention to them. Plus, I wasn't really using any of my, um, like my supply special abilities, which increases my crit chance to hit. Or, yeah, basically my crit chance to do double damage and so on. So, yeah, that's gonna help. You see all those little yellow numbers popping up are crit hits. Alright, so, we cleared them out. And now we're just waiting for our health to come back and our suppression to come back, which we're gonna sit right there to let those come back and we're gonna move up. We're also seeing Bullgrins and Ogrins on this level. Bullgrins and Ogrins obviously are going to be much tougher individuals. Now, uh, something else I always think is kind of funny about uh, Ogrin lore. I don't know how familiar everybody is with Ogrins, but uh, basically Ogrins are, in the lore, they're described as being big, you know, dumb brutes essentially, who are in a very, very loyal to the Emperor. So, generally in a case where you see Ogrins that are not fighting on the side of the Emperor, like in this case, I would assume, it's because the Guardsmen elements that have been attached to them have tricked them into believing that they are indeed fighting for the Emperor. Uh, they almost view the Emperor as kind of like um, like a father, like, they, they like, like a child looking up to a father almost, uh, with childlike wonder, which is hilarious because they're gigantic and look very mean. <laughs> But, you know, hey, who cares? Who's, who's looking that much into it? Otherwise, if they kind of just said, well, Bullgrins, let's throw them in here. And if they start spouting, like, anti-Emperor stuff, then maybe the lore's changed. And I just don't know what I'm talking about. Which is always a possibility. You never know nowadays with uh, all the changes that's recently come to the Warhammer lore and the Warhammer universe itself. And they look like they're summoning something. I don't want them to summon whatever they're summoning. Nope, I'm not stopping them. They're going. They're, they're going all the way. Okay, they summoned it. Oh, that's a plague ogre. What the fuck even is that? <laughs> Ooh, I've never seen one of you before. And it hurts. I don't want it to kill me. Well, good, I took it down. You know what? It looked a lot scarier than it ended up being. Let's chop up some uh, Imperial Guardsmen. Just a whap. 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 Get fucked. What about this guy over here? I'll get some too. That's right. I wish there was uh, more stuff to pick up on the maps. Uh, there tends to be... <laughs> that was disgusting. There tends to be uh, things that you can find uh, already on the map, like uh, over here. Well, I was kind of hoping there was actually a chest in the middle of that, but it looks like there's not. Um, but it just still feels like some of the levels can be a little barren. Uh, just having enemies and then occasional loot drops. I don't really know what I would expect in that case, but see, that's I guess that's one of the things you like about Diablo, right? In Diablo, um, even if it's useless items or money and stuff like that, which you really don't need money much in Diablo, um, at least in my experiences with the newer Diablo, the older Diablo, I guess it meant a little bit more. Especially because you had to regen town portals or buy new town portals and stuff like that. Uh, so there always kind of was some amount of use for it. But in uh, Diablo 3, there doesn't seem to be much to use your money for. Even in this game, I don't use money very often. I pretty much have saved up like 350 grand uh, in the game, 350,000 credits. So it would be cool if there was like upgrades you could do on your ship or something that would kind of change things up a little bit. But who knows, maybe there is and I just haven't played through. I have noticed that you do have to play through the story to actually unlock more of the features in the story. Uh, for example, yeah, that that ogre just said die inquisitor. So, um, anyway, interesting. You should assume I'm not an inquisitor. You should assume I'm the opposite of an inquisitor. Like, you know, a chaos person, a heretic, maybe. Maybe you should say heretic, little ogre. Poor guy, he's dead now. Anyway, I've noticed that more stuff you can unlock, like your inoculator uh, customization options, come as you find the arch mate or the majos that you've been looking around, the majos, biologos, biologists, or whatever the hell they call them in this game. Um, and I've even gotten to the point where the space marine, Kai Thorn, is finally awake, 
Even though I've been doing mish, that is a big old turret and it hurts a lot. It hurts a lot, lot. Can we can we get behind this? There we go. <laughs> Jesus. Ugh. How is that a tarantula auto cannon? What? I mean this that's a tarantula. That's much bigger than a tarantula. That's like a granddaddy long leg. Big old, big old dude. Oh, run, 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 run. I don't want to die. I want to live. Um, this map is kind of janky. Like, I wonder if I can hit him. Nope. Am I hitting him? Probably not. Let's leave before I die. So, other games y'all should probably be excited for uh, coming up here soon. With May 22nd rolling around, I know that uh, State of Decay 2 is coming out. And the updated... At Space Hulk Deathwing, which I'm actually pretty excited for. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, they actually end up doing with the game. I know they're already pretty much just expanding upon like the customization options for your weapons and so on and so forth. But if that actually translate in, translates into a more fun game, that's what's yet to be seen. Uh, what's actually important to note is that if you already own the game, then it's going to be... Can I not... Pick that up? Oh, I guess I already had one. I didn't realize I was filled up. If you already own the game, you actually get the enhanced edition for free, which is kind of a big deal. I mean, that's, what, $40 you don't have to pay uh, for the game? So I would highly recommend it for those who don't already have the game to go ahead and go try to grab a copy now off G2A or Green Man Gaming or something like that. You can probably get a really good deal. Or Fanatical, I believe it's going to be pretty cheap on Fanatical as well, which, if you're not familiar with, is the old school uh, bundle stars. Jesus, monkeys and bananas. Holy crap, that is so many bad guys. Oh, no. No, 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 sir. I disagree with your, uh, your amount of people. Here. Refuse to be a slave. Yes, refuse to be a slave. Well, you should be a slave. It's probably better. Be a slave for the Imperium. So you don't want to be a slave for the Imperium, but you want to be a slave for the Chaos Gods. I, don't know. I think I'll take having to work really hard and having kind of a shitty life as opposed to pretty, mi pretty much getting murder fucked into non-existence every day by some Slaneshi demon. Just saying, you know, pick your battles, pick your battles, man. But, anywho, like I said, I'm pretty excited for um, Space Hulk, Deathwing, and even State of Decay. State of Decay 1 was one of my favorite, if actually it's my favorite zombie game. Uh, I absolutely adore it. And it kind of reminds me, I don't know if any of you have ever played like Fort Zombie, which was uh, a poorly made game that had a really good premise behind it. It, it could have hypothetically been the best zombie game if it had a little bit more love. If I'm not mistaken, it was actually made by Kerberos Interactive, the same guys who brought you Sword of the Stars. Uh, which was a very wonderful game. At least the first game was. The second game was a little bit more disappointing, unfortunately. I put a lot of time in the first game, and then, like I said, the second one came out, and the whole system just became incredibly convoluted to the point where it was just a pain in the ass. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I ended up not putting a whole lot of time into Sword of the Stars 2 at all. Not to mention that when it did come out, it was a complete buggy mess. I mean, they had to, they, it wasn't until, what, Lords of Winter came out? I think it was like the small expansion pack that came out for it, that it was even playable, in my opinion. And even at that point, it wasn't, it wasn't even that good. So, there you go, I guess that's what happens. Needless to say, Kerberos Interactive made... Fort Zombie, which was an open world, uh, in a sense, open world. You could travel around this really big city and create your bases in them, scavenge resources, uh, find other survivors, all manner of things while trying to survive the zombie horde. What was more important was it wasn't a game that you could just go in and fight hordes of zombies easily. It was really hard. As a matter of fact, you might think kind of similar to Project Zomboid. Uh, so needless to say, it was it was a it was a tough game, but it had a really cool premise behind it, and I think it pretty much inspired a lot of zombie games that would eventually come out. So, but this is all off topic. I just felt like talking about Fort Zombie. I guess there's State of Decay 2 though. When it's coming out, I'm pretty excited for it. The fact that it's adding co-op into the game is going to be an absolute blast, in my opinion. Uh, State of Decay 1, like I said, is my favorite zombie game, and I put so much time into it, it's it's ridiculous. I never beat it, 
mind you, but I did get really far into it. So, with State of Decay 2, I'm really hoping they expand upon a lot of the features that made the first game fun. Kind of like the, uh, the base building aspect, being able to customize your base, gather resources, and so on and so forth. Uh, I kind of hope they expand upon the melee system a little bit more, may maybe make it a little bit more smooth, uh, more effective, I would say. Adding more characters, more character traits, maybe have a little bit more personalization there as well, if that can happen, I'm not sure. So, it'll be cool to see something like that happen.